Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to this 15th episode of Sector Spotlight. It is Tuesday, the 21st of January, 2020. And this is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to sectors, relative strength, and or rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Campenaar, and I am your host for today's show. Our lovely Rachel is still on a well-deserved holiday, so it's just me and Zach for today. If you want to participate, the chat box is open during the show, and we will monitor what's coming in. Email still seems to be the preferred way of communicating for most of us, and that is fine. Just don't be shy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. And let's see what we can do for today. We are going to watch at the sectors. We're going to do a little overview. And as I announced in the mailbox, in the, uh, the chat box, we have a full mailbag. So um, I decided to do, because I got two questions that came in over the mail that I both think are worthwhile answering during the show, because they're like... Uh, not time sensitive, and I think that there are more people who are interested in the answers to that. So I'm going to try to answer one before the break, and then after the break, there is a bit longer one that I probably need to spend a little bit of time on. And then, uh, as usual, we'll have a uh, fair trade idea before we close. So let's go and bring up some charts here. Yeah, it's been two weeks since we last spoke because of the snow situation in Redmond. Um, the chart on the left shows the nine days. That's exactly since the seventh. That was the last live version of Sector Spotlight. What happened? Um, real estate, very good. Stocks, pretty good. And then this is the balanced index fund. So if we run then on the right-hand side, it's it's... It's commodities that are really, again, week, week, week. And I believe we will have the, um, the 2020 uh, yearly outlook coming. And I'll, I'll already warn you that one of my sort of, well, you've got to give a, uh, a prediction. And I really hate doing that because I don't think we're in the business of predicting. But hey, it's the beginning of the year. It's the start of the year. So we'll do that. And one of my gambles, so to say, my things like, okay, this could be an asset class that's that will be surprising in 2020 is commodities. So we're off to the races with a very good start on that one. Um, this is the relative picture. So for this month, it's only real estate and stocks outperforming the rest underperforming with commodities, obviously the weakest one. And um, if we go and do the same for the sectors, I'm going to change this here to nine days because that is brings us back to uh, January 7. This is the real performance. You see that all sectors had a very good start in the year, except for energy. That's down 2.6%. And if we bring this back to a relative, then we'll see that technology, once again, is the sector that's outperforming everybody else. Um, two surprising sectors in the top, it's utilities and real estate with 1.6 and 1.08%. And then we've got commercial services. This whole stuff is sort of moving in line with the index. There's nothing happening here. And on the weaker side, we've got industrials, financials, discretionary, and of course, energy. So really, energy is, is the dog. And, and just a heads up, I don't see it changing anytime soon. So let's bring this. Um, into an RRG. And let's start with the asset classes here. And that, you know, this is one that's we can we can do this really, really quickly because we got spy still inside the leading quadrant. Um, traveling to the right, you see that there is uh, there is positive momentum because we're we're above a hundred on the RS momentum line, but it's not increasing anymore. That means that we have a very stable trend. It's going up at a at a very stable rate um and that's good news so stocks continue to outperform the vanguard balanced index fund and here <clears throat> everything else is in the in the in the lagging quadrant um real estate turning back up that could be the interesting one moving there um you know government bonds corporate bonds high yield not sure, so I'd like to stay away from there for the time being. Government bonds, may, well, I mean, anyway, no, not very good. Um, 
and here is commodities. This this one is commodities that that looked pretty good when we started, and then it started, and it now it's now heading um, uh, west again, deeper into the lagging quadrant. So I'll stay away. The the chart that belongs to this RRG that I want to show you is the one of spy. And as I said, very stable uptrend, and we're looking at the momentum of this line here. That is spy versus VBI and X. And as you can see, this is a very, it's almost a straight, you can, you can put a, a ruler next to it. It's almost a straight line. So that's very, very stable. It's very, very strong. Causes the RRG lines uh, to stay above 100 with the green line, the RS momentum. Stable, positive momentum. It's going up, but it's not accelerating. And we got the RS ratio. That's the measure for the relative trend. Steadily moving higher because that trend is going up and it's extending its way higher, which is a good sign. Uh, price chart, no problem at all. And as you can see, I mean, this one, this chart has plenty of room to the downside to uh, to correct in case of a market top. But I I have never seen. Everybody's talking about market tops and peaks, and people are shorting. And I I, 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 everywhere you read stuff, everybody's trying to call the next top. And of course, it's super cool if you can do that, but. The problem is that um, more people are calling more tops than there have ever been in history, probably. So the one thing that I'm focusing on is there probably will be a top coming sometime soon. Well, well will be a top coming, but I don't know whether it's going to be sometime soon. The only thing that I, that I do know, not with certainty, but I cannot remember a a serious market top followed by a serious market drop that came out of thin air, that came like you, you make a new all-time high and then all of a sudden you just crash. Crash don't, don't occur from market peaks. Usually you get a little, bit of, a little bit of a drop, falls down, you got a little bit of a reaction, and then things start to fall apart. So I'm going to rely on the trend and on the charts to give us ample warning uh, before that happens. So for the time being, Stocks are still the preferred asset class. Let's quickly move to the um, to the sectors. Uh, so we got the uh, the sectors that we're used to, the spiders uh, offered by State Street, State Street spiders. And I'm going to work my way through my chart list here. This is the one that we had. And we'll just do it in alphabetical order. Um, by the way, the blue line, the blue dotted line that you see on all the charts is the last time that I annotated this chart. It's just for my own reference in case you wonder what's that blue line doing there. That's the day or the week that I updated that chart the last time. Now, let me highlight materials here in the chart. Inside lagging, traveling further down, and that is completely backed up by this here, or this is actually the result of this. Relative strength broke down, RRG lines are going down. And this is one of the few sectors uh, together with energy on top of my head that has not broken out uh, above this major high here just well maybe a little bit there but not not massively um, so this is one of the weaker sectors I'd like to stay away from if we go to communication services I wrote a, uh, a blog article yesterday and um, I think this is one of the sectors that we need to keep an eye on uh, we have a very nice break uh, on price and we now see that relative strength is starting to bottom out and it took out some uh, falling resistance and the RRG lines are turning higher. So it's inside improving, but it's about to move higher very likely. Uh, so this is, could be one of the sectors that will be have a leading role uh, in the near future. Energy, I just said energy is one of the sectors that I wanna be avoiding. Um, it's nowhere near a breakout to new highs, uh, it took out this falling resistance line, tested the 62 area, coming down again. I don't, I don't see this thing going higher anytime soon. And the trend in relative strength is undeniably moving lower for almost two years, about two, three months off for two years. And you can see that the uh, red RS ratio line, it dropped below 100 in September 2018 and it has still not recovered. So it's picked up this downtrend all the way down. Um, we, because of this flattening here, the momentum peaked above 100, 
that is causing that move into improving. But as you can see, it's very far to the left and it's already starting to curl down again. So if that green line drops, then this will start to drag lower and we'll be back into the lagging quadrant. And I think that energy uh, will still be one of the weaker, if not the weakest sector in the S&P. Financial's been doing very well uh, recently, but it's now starting to lose a little bit of momentum. Uh, the longer term picture seems to be doing all right. We took out this falling resistance line. If we form a low here and we start to move higher, we may see financials rotate inside weakening and start to curl back up, which would be a good sign. It's, we're not there yet, but I'm keeping an eye on this because the chart itself still looks pretty good and relative strength has the possibility to put in a low here and turn for the better. For the time being, it's a, it's a dip inside the, um, inside the relative uptrend. Industrials, that is a pretty good example of how relative strength works. That price chart is looking pretty good. We broke out to new highs, consolidated, broke out again. But look at the relative. It's, it's coming out of that descending triangle. We drop below support and we are now going lower again. And that's being picked up by the ROG lines that are pointing lower. It's pushing it deeper into the lagging quadrant. Uh, and I expect this one to continue its underperformance. Technology. Well, I mean, what can you say? This, is, this, this just looks like spy on the asset class rotation chart. Uh, the strongest sector in the universe at a very stable pace. The trend is moving higher. There is plenty of room for corrections, but before this trend turns around, uh, we need a lot more weakness, guys. We need a lot more weakness. Staples inside lagging. You see, and this is very nice. You see, here you see technology with a very nice uptrend. And you see staples with a very nice uptrend. But look at the relative. That took out that rising support line, consolidated, uh, lower high, and now moving lower again. It's inside the lagging quadrant, picking up a little bit of relative strength, but not merely enough to turn it around. Yes, it's still moving lower uh, on the ratio chart as well. So uh, stay away for, for staples for the time being. And then we've got real estate. Had a good week, but it's very, very weak. It's the weakest one on the RS ratio scale on the RRG. Um, and for the time being, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to regard this hiccup here, this, line, this, this move up uh, of the last two weeks as a reaction, as a uh, recovery out of that low, out of that decline that we had in that break of support. So that's going to be a weak one for the time being. Now we'll have utilities. Again, that, that chart looks great. The interesting thing with utilities here is that we are hovering above that support, old resistance now support line. And the RRG lines are starting to turning up, turn up. And you see the tail of utilities on the RRG uh, starting to move higher. So if we hold this, this could be an interesting rotation. Um, keep, an eye on, keep an eye on utilities. Uh, we've got solid support around 65 if we can hold that and that uptrend remains intact and the market doesn't you know, go off to the races anytime soon, then utilities could be uh, getting up into the improving quadrant in the next few weeks. Healthcare, that is uh, a sector that has been leading for the last few weeks. It's now rolling over slightly. I think as starting to correct this rally that we had out of that triangle formation. Um, it's getting a little bit tired. You see that relative strength is running into resistance coming off that June 2019 high. Um, regardless, it's still a very strong sector that seems to be going through a little bit of relative correction. Um, one of the stronger sectors in the universe. And then we're going to finish off with discretionary. That is inside lagging. And you see there is, it's again, it's a very strong chart because we broke out of that triangle and we're moving higher. So it's, it's respecting all the technical tools that we have. We have a very nice triangle formation. We break out and we've got a follow through. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're just trading X or Y, that is probably a profitable move. But look at this triangle here. It's about breaking out. It's about the same time. But 
healthcare moved much, much faster than discretionary. And that's why the relative strength of discretionary just is tanking. It's going nowhere. Um, and, and it's just telling us that the rally in consumer discretionary is not merely fast and strong enough to keep up with the rest of the market. Um, so that's why relative strength is going lower. Our G lines are very low levels. We're picking up a little bit because of this flat spot that we saw here. Um, I wonder whether discretionary will have enough momentum uh, to turn into improving and then to leading, but we'll have plenty more weekly observations before we get anywhere near moving into the leading quadrant. So that's that for uh, this week. Um, I am quickly going to um, talk about the first question out of the mailbag because it ties in with what we did on the, um, on the sector stuff. We're gonna push the break two minutes further down. So I got this email of someone who asked me, when is the time to buy the sector on improving or when in the leading box? So is it too late to buy XLV or XLK or do you go for XLC? And then the last part in your yearly graphs of the past that shows XLY was the best in Feb. I'm gonna skip that. That has to do with the uh, seasonality work that we've been doing lately. So we're gonna look for uh, the same chart that we've been looking at the last 10 minutes. And this user says, is it too late to buy XLK or XLV or do you go with XLC? Well, my answer that I, and I actually answer people who write emails, um, is that it is a very subjective question or a very subjective interpretation. XLK and XLV have gone through serious moves already. So the odds for these moves to slow down or turn around are increasing every week. Now, if you go for XLC, that has just started to move up. So it has a lot more potential before it reaches levels that XL, um, XLK and XLV are having. It's very personal. Um, the judgment call that everybody for themselves have to make is do I go with established trends like XLK and XLV and am I prepared to get out, if, if I buy them now, am I prepared to get out soon if they start to roll over? Or will I onboard an emerging trend in communication services with the opportunity to ride a longer move? I cannot answer that question uh, because it's very personal and it depends on your trading style. The judgment call that you have to make is, am I going for established, which is further to the right? which is already well underway with increasing odds of rolling over, or am I going to go with a trail and a move that is just emerging and potentially has a long way to go? That's a very personal thing. I can answer that, but that's the way you have to look and interpret these RRG charts and the tails on the chart. Anyway, we're going to a quick break right now, and I will answer the second question of the mailbags right after the break. See you there. And we're back. With Rachel's absence, nobody dares to write questions in the, uh, in the chat box, which is a good thing because now I can move on to the second one. Uh, and I can, I, I'm a guy, I can't do two things at the same time. So thank you for that. Please promise me next week you'll have some questions in the chat box. I will make it very interactive. The second question is, is a little bit longer than the first one. That's why I wanted to do it after the break. So we've got a little bit more time to go over it. Um, and I thought it was, when you get an email 
with a subject line that says short-term daily RRG charts are useless for short-term traders due to so-called time lag. I can guarantee you that draws my attention. That, that, has, that, that subject line has my attention. RRG charts are useless. Well, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling people that RRG charts are the holy grail, uh, but I also don't think they're useless. The problem that this user described is that the short-term daily RRG chart does not agree with short-term daily sharp chart of most recent daily data. For example, reference the screenshots below of sharp chart and RRG chart for symbol SMH. The most recent five days of the RRG chart, KDK RS ratio trend shows completely opposite from the most recent five-day price trend of the sharp chart plot. That is, on the daily sharp chart, the price of SMH is improving, while the JDKRS ratio on the daily RRG chart shows the price weakening for the most recent five trading days. I conclude, therefore, that RRG charts are completely useless for short-term daily analysis for short-term swing traders such as myself. Well, there's a solution as well. In order to fix the problem, the RRG algorithm needs to be modified to be able to account for and adjust for different time periods primarily the recent short term, which are chosen for display by the user. Five day, 10 day, 20 day. Uh, I'm guessing that the problem is due to the fact that the RRG algorithm employs a long period moving average, which is applied to the RRG data before plotting it, and that the same long term period of MA is used for all RRG plots, regardless of the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I actually wrote this uh, person a, a long answer, but I thought it was a very interesting um statement and and i could use that to talk to you about the clarification um first of all let me emphasize that the rg algorithm is not does not have like um uh parameters or look back periods like you're used to with moving averages and rsis and stuff it is uh it is um combining a number of things to be able to, to seek trends, but also to seek those trends inside the universe against multiple other securities and a common benchmark. And that is the primary strength of an RRG that is actually showing multiple, it's showing the, the, the relative trends of multiple items in one image. Um, let me let me put up the SMH. So this is the chart that was attached to that email. So that was SMH. And it was actually done on the uh, 16th of January. So it was here. And the benchmark was dollar one. So this this person clearly is a uh, is a swing trader or a day trader who likes um, absolute returns. It's not not too much concerned about the uh, relative returns. So here is your 16th. Uh, let me bring here SMH. And that needs a daily chart. And I need to change this to $1 and this one as well to make it match. And here, this is this. So this is the this is the the case, the cases, uh, so to say. Um, and let me zoom in this a little bit because it was very short-term stuff. You see that the the um, the relative strength is actually leveling off. I mean, the RG lines picked up this uptrend back in September 2019, uh, somewhere in the 117 range. And it's riding it basically all the way up with a few hiccups here, rotating through, um, weakening and coming back up. And it's picking up all this uptrend. Um, clearly, the interest here is much shorter term in nature. as referring to the last five days since September 16. So that is 16. So the, my cursor is now on the 16th. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Well, I mean, on a daily chart, that is that is very hard to call that a trend. If you if you start at the low here, you got four bucks, 
which might be a trend, but not on a daily relative strength chart, even, not even if you're using dollar one as the benchmark. Um, so my answer to this question is that the problem, it, it, it's not that RRG is the problem. The problem is the perception of a trend. And in my work, I have always used, uh, primarily I use weekly RRGs and weekly charts. Um, and that is, that is a legacy from the time that I worked with um, institutional investors on the trading floor. These guys cannot you know, buy and sell within a week. <clears throat> if they buy something, they probably need a week to get a position anyhow. Um, so, so the horizon needs to be a little bit longer. That's why I use weekly charts. That's why I use weekly RRGs. And the rule of thumb that I apply there is that whenever my call, my recommendation, my trend change was there, that I would expect that to remain in that new trend for a minimum of three months. If you translate that to daily, that would translate into a trend of a minimum of three weeks. Well, I think that in this case, that qualifies as a trend of minimum of three weeks. It's actually much, much longer. So if we just start to look at this tiny little bit here at the end, it's not RRG that's the problem. It's the definition of trend that's the problem. And the solution is not to modify the algorithm of RRG. The solution is to run RRG on shorter term timeframes. Now, we cannot do that on stock charts yet, but we are um, looking to, uh, to get that done. What I did, and I, ha I have to grab um, a, a tool, I, I need to grab a tool that, and from another uh, implementation of RRG that actually allows for uh, intraday RRGs. And I'm going to play this rotation here. It shows you that SMH um, ETF and the rotation on an hourly basis. And the, the yellow vertical on the bar chart corresponds with the observation on the RRG. So I'm going to let this run. And then you can see how that moves through time, how that hourly rotation works out in combination with where it is. And you can see that, especially in this last bit here, that the hourly RRG picks up on the flat spots and turns up when it moves like 15 hours, moves down again when it moves here, and then it starts to move up again. So um, the answer to this question was very long, and I hope that I have given you the, the idea that running RRGs on intraday data is very well possible. And um, that solves the problem of the trend that is too short or too long. So we don't need to modify RRG. We need to modify the periodicity of the trends that we are looking at. Um, on top of that, running an RRG on a single stock um, can be done, but I think it's much more useful if you fill up the canvas with more than one so you can get the interaction between uh, all the elements in that universe and not just uh, a single stock, even if you're using dollar one as the benchmark. Um, we ran out of time. I was afraid of that. Doesn't matter. I'm going to give you the um, write up of the pair trading idea in a blog. Here it is. And it was the 15th episode of Sector Spotlight. Thank you for watching. Please don't be a stranger and stay in touch. Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday, 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern. Meanwhile, if you want to read more about sectors and RRGs, please go to the RRG blog on stockcharts.com, or even better, subscribe using the link below each article to make sure you'll receive a nudge every time a new article is posted. See you next week. Thank <music> you.